What is it? How bad is it? No idea. Yeah. How uh, light? How so light? When you give it a nine out of ten. Wow, a nine out of a ten. A mystery bat. Yeah. You have no idea what that is. Nine out of ten. No clue. Uh, and that's why actually really, really, really stupid to buy that back. Hey, hey, uh, you guys are, uh, you're here. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't realize, I didn't realize our 2024 BB Corbat video had started already. Just, you know, that's how, that's how it works. Um, have you been to the site, by the way? We're not great YouTubers. Other people do YouTube fantastic. It's not, it's not really our jam, but, but this year we're going to do something a little differently. Opposed to like making one video every six months and then being irritated at myself that I forgot to make a follow-up video. We're making one. Make a one BB Corbat video to 2024 encyclopedia. Let's call it the documentary of BB Corp 2024 bats. Think of, somebody think of a clever name and email me. In any case, that's what we're doing. You can watch this whole thing. If I were you, pop that bad boy on two times speed and just get it, get it done. Then you will, then you'll know everything. We're going to walk you through all the data collection that we do, all the reviews we do, everything that we have done for 2024 BB Corbats. And, and here's the trick. You can jump around to the different chapters in the description. So click on the description. You can like, you know, go to different timestamps if you want to see a specific bat or things like swing weight or balance points or barrel sizes or whatever else it is you're going to do. The other thing we're doing that I think is like, we're, we're, we're jacked out of our mind, okay? It's that we are doing blind bat testing this year. Um, now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking blind people cannot hit and if he wants to get a bunch of YouTube views, then that's a great way to do it. Like, get some blind people to test it. But that's not, that's not what I mean. We're making the bat blind, not the hitter blind. And so, what do we mean by that? Well, go to the description, look at the part that says something like blind bat testing, and you will see what we mean when I say we're going to make the bat blind this year, and we're going to do testing to try to get the best absolute data that we can and put it all over our website and help people like you make the right decision when it comes to, uh, to the right BB core bat for 2024. So the industry wants you to believe that th their particular bat is best, and that's not that's not news to anybody, right? Of course, that's, that's their job. That's what they do. They're trying to convince you that their bat is, is best, is, is right, is the right one for you. But implied in that is that there is a difference. Um, that the bat is different than other bats or from last year's model or from two years ago or from whatever. And therefore, that is the reason that our bat is better than everybody else's bat. And so this, this implication that there are differences in bats is what drives us to measure the differences in bats. Because it's not, it's not super obvious what the differences are. I mean, I think people like intuitively feel like maybe there should be, but we sort of, we sort of accept this notion that, oh yeah, there, there's definitely differences in bats. And because there is a best one, if there are differences. And so as, as, a, as a site that's like built around the idea that we're just gonna review bats, we're gonna, we're gonna tell you about them. What, what can we do other than say, well, let's try to think of all the different ways we can measure bats and let's then just give you those data points. And then you can make a decision based on those data points. Because the truth is, just because we can measure it doesn't necessarily mean that we should be, right? Like, like should we be measuring, measuring, should we be measuring barrel size? Should we be measuring the length of the bat? Should we be measuring the, the hand, like the width of the handle? Should we be measuring uh, compression? Should we be measuring uh, uh, the sound of the bat? Like, are these things we should measure? Because do they actually mean anything? And again, it's not, it's not that we necessarily believe that barrel profile, as one example that we'll show you here in a minute, um, actually means much of anything, if anything at all. It's just that the industry is the one that is saying their bat is better. And the only way it could be better is if it were different. Well, then let's measure all the differences and then give them to the consumer and let you make a decision based on how, how much better that bat is by being different than every other bat. In fact, go, I mean, go, go to YouTube, go to, uh, go to Instagram, go, go to any video you've seen on a, on, a, on a bat in the last what feels like forever and every one of these, these, these things are comparing it to another bet. It's like implied that there is a better one because we're gonna choose a winner. We're gonna, we're gonna decide on the best. We're gonna, we're gonna do whatever it is to make some bat become the better bat because we just assume, well, there are differences. We can tell what those differences are and 
but but is that even is that even a fair assumption? And the answer is the the hypothesis of the industry, if you will, is that bats are better. And the implication of bats being better is that bats are different. And if bats are in fact different, we should be able to measure that and then present that data and say, hey, here, here's all the data. You get to decide what makes this thing better. Now, um, uh, so, so, so with that said, we're gonna dive into a bunch of chapters here that measure these 20 something BB core bats for 2024. And we're gonna measure some weird stuff. But again, we're trying to find the differences that are implied by these companies and the industry saying, hey, these bats are in fact better than this bat. And it's more than just some like, Ooh, I feel like in my soul that this bat hit it really good. It's like, no, we're going we're gonna to measure it. We're going to measure it and say, this is the difference. Is that worth it to you to either spend more money or change your mind or buy a brand you thought you might not have bought? I don't know. I don't know. But that's what we're doing. And so I, I just don't want to get lost in maybe the, well, why, why is he measuring the barrel length? Who, who cares about the barrel length? We get a lot of companies that say that. Well, we, we don't care about the barrel, the max barrel length. And I think... Yeah, that's fair that you don't care about it because your bat doesn't do really well in that category. So I get it. I get that you don't care about it. But remember, you started this. We didn't start this. You started it by saying your bat was better. Well, if it's better, it's got to be different. And so we're here to find out how, in fact, is it different. And Hey, let's get started with the thing that uh, you know we harp on all the time, and that is that is swing weight. We find it to be the single most important factor in buying a bat. Um, and that's been, uh, for years, we've kind of said that. There, there's a very interesting thing though that is occurring, uh, we think, over the last couple of years. And we, we've never seen it any more um, than uh, we do this year with 2024 BB Core bats. But before I, before I dive into each one of these little bats and just show you, um, we talk about this elsewhere, but I don't want to be too repetitive, but if we're doing the encyclopedia on BB Core uh, swing weights, you have to understand what a swing weight is. A swing weight is not the balance point, okay? I can't get the balance point of a bunch of bats and say, well, a balance point more towards here means it's end loaded versus hand loaded. Just, it's just not how it works. Um, swing weight works by measuring this thing called the pendulum period, by measuring a thing called the balance point, and then the total weight. And you take those numbers, you do some fancy calculations, and you get what's called an MOI, which stands for mass moment of inertia. And then we calculate it in the industry about six inches from the knob. Now this is obviously a miniature bat. And so we're gonna take your miniature bat and pretend like this is a, a six inches from the knob. And we measure how much strength it requires to pivot this bat around this spot at six inches from the knob, right? That is what MOI is. How much strength, how much force does that require to spin it around right there? Now, as you change the pivot point, right, the, the, the strength to spin this bat around changes. If the pivot point was right at the balance point, for example, it would be a really, really light bat. In fact, if you wanted to have the lightest bat possible for a given bat, you could just put your hands way up around the pivot point, uh, or, or sorry, around the balance point, you could, you could swing it right here. And the bat is, it's really, really light if you choked up by half the bat. That obviously doesn't happen. If you want the bat to be heavier, well then you just change where that pivot point is. Now, it turns out that in, that in practice, six inches from the knob is a terrible place. Most people swing more like they pivot it at the knob when they swing, not so much six inches from the knob. And so that actually changes um, the swing weight. And by the way, it's not linear based on these bats, meaning that just because a bat swings heavier than another bat at the six inch point does not necessarily mean it also swings heavier at the zero inch mark. It's very, swing weight is kind of weird like that. So it's all about the distribution of the weight along the bat and in the knob and all that kind of fun stuff. You don't necessarily need to understand that to, to, to understand what I'm about to tell you, but it's probably useful as you start to think about swing weight and how it is the most significant factor in how it feels when you swing a bat. But it's also important to understand that when we uh, change where the pivot is, the, the, the swing weight changes relative to how we are swinging it compared to other bats. Meaning that I could take a bat and if my pivot when I swing is let's say it's right at the knob, okay? This bat would have a certain swing weight, all right? If when you swing it, let's say your pivot point is off the knob, so that means you kind of swing and your bat kind of goes like that a little bit, right? So like the pivot would be there. That means you could feel like the bat was say light, and I could feel like the bat was heavy, and we would both be right. And that's because, relatively speaking, because our swings are different, the way that our, 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 uh, our swing weight feels can be different. 
Now that's, that's crazy to think about for a second because we've been told our whole lives that swing weight is like this constant universal truth and that Joe Schmo can swing the bat and I can swing the bat and be like, yeah, yeah, that's a light swing bat. But the truth is it literally can be different for both of us, which is pretty wild. Now, they kind of stay in the same range. So I don't, I don't want you to think that the heaviest bat out there is going to feel light for me and heavy for you and that's the reason. But there's definitely some variability there that I think is super underappreciated in the industry, okay? So, so take that for what it's worth. Also, now, 2024 BB Core Bats. This is the order that they play from lightest to heaviest. But before you look too closely at this list of bats, it's super important that I tell you about what I'm calling the, co the great coalition, coalescing, sorry, the great coalescing of 2024 BB Core Bats. When we first started measuring swing weights back in like 2017, right? No one was even talking about swing weights. No, no one had any idea what they were. Like we would talk to people in the industry. They were like, I'm not sure what our swing weight is. Now everybody knows. Uh, they don't publish them as much as I think they should, but they're still out there. But the range in BB Core Bats was dramatic. We found 33 inch BB Core Bats to be as light as like 8,500, all the way up to like 10,900, meaning a massive gap, like a 20 plus percent gap between the lightest swing bat and the heaviest swing bat. And so putting these categories of end loaded and balanced and maybe hand loaded made a lot of sense because there really was a distinction. Well, guess what? For the first year we've ever, ever done this, all the BB Core bats 2024 that are along this wall, except for the tank, which is this one down here at the end, which we'll talk about why we think that's a different in a second. But basically from the goods all the way down here to the Cat X, which is also the same as the Cat X Vanta, it is less than 10% less than 10% difference. We got about 8,900 in a bat like the Cadex Vanta, and you have about 9,800 in a bat like the Goods. So that means those numbers, by the way, those are just, those, that's the MOI number at six inches. And so basically if you take the spread from that, which is about 900 over 9,800, you're about anywhere, depending on which side you count from, about 10%, maybe a little less than 10% on average is the difference between the lightest to the heaviest swing BB core bat. Can you, I'll, I'll be honest. Our minds are absolutely blown by that. This is what I'm trying to say. While swing weight is for sure the single most important thing you can deal with when you're choosing a bat, it turns out that all the bats, they're not a distinction as much as they once were. It's just not that big of a distinction. So again, back to our sort of thesis of the industry that says our bat's better, therefore our bat's different. And one of the reasons our bat's different is because it has the right balance. balance. Well, guess what? they all kind of have the same balance now. All the bats are coalescing around the same kind of bat. They're all turning into the same bat. And, and watch this absolute, we think, mind-blowing craziness. Heaviest swinging bat, the goods. Forget about the tank for just a second. The goods. Lightest swinging bat, the cat X, but right next to it, and they're within like a half a percent of each other, is uh, the Voodoo one. You have De Marini is setting the edges Lightest, heaviest, and that is what a new end-loaded bat looks like. That's what a new light swing bat, and everybody else is simply trying to hit their target. We find that fascinating. Now, I'm sure some of the other big names will be like, no, that's not how we do it. Well, do it however you want, but I know this much. The lightest swinging bat this year, 2024, Voodoo One. Heaviest swinging bat this year, 2024, The Goods, not counting the tank. Give me a second. I'll keep saying that. Okay. But it's only 10%. And the truth is, ready? From this bat right here, which is the Mach AI, all the way up through this War Stick Bone Saber Hybrid, the difference is about 400 to 500 points, meaning about 4 or 5% is the difference between here to here. Almost 90% of the BB Core bats in 2024 are within a 5% swing weight. Oh, I don't know what you think. My mind is blown. My mind is blown by that. 5%, that, that's not a difference at all. You can't, you couldn't tell. You couldn't pick up these two bats in a blind test be like, this is different. And the truth is the manufacturer tolerance means that within 5%, this bat, you get another one of these bats, the Mach AI, or not to pick on them, the, the Meta or the Cat Connect, you get another one of these bats off the shelf and measure it again, and it will be plus or minus a few percent. It could be anywhere along here, simply because the factory it came out of that day and the glue they put in the end cap and how the dude wrapped it. That is the difference, meaning there is no difference in swing weight between about the middle 80% of BB Core Bats. Whole, I, I don't know what you think about that. That absolutely blows our mind.
the bats are coalescing around a single bat. The edges are set by demarining. And when we talk about bats needing to be different to be better, they, they, they have failed. They have failed because they're all, they all kind of swing the same. And that is the truth. And the truth is if you like a bat down here for some reason, it is a lot easier to take that bat and just go like this to make it lighter than it is to say, I, I guess I need to buy a lighter swinging bat. It is why we think we often see smaller, younger kids getting away with swinging a bat like the goods or the icon or the, the, the goods one piece, which are end loaded, not just because they're, they're down here, but they're still so close to the rest of these bats that it, it really doesn't make a difference. There's no distinction here. There's no distinction. It is a, it is a difference uh, without distinction. Is that, is that a phrase? I have no idea. So with that said, that long sort of diatribe about swing weights, now you know as much as I do, which is swing weight is the most important factor you can consider. However, it turns out that these bats, they're, there's no, they're, they're all, they've all coalesced. They've all really coalesced. Now, with that said, of course, there are some differences, right? These bats down here, especially like the, the Cat X, Vanta, the Voodoo One, um, these, and, and the Lev 3 and the Pro 44, I think they, you could probably say, yeah, these bats swing light, right? The Mach AI, it swings light. You could take a bat down here and say, I, can't, I, don't, I don't like to call it heavy because it's not really heavy. It's just, it's just not a super light bat. But you, you, these bats down here swing maybe with a little more, <clears throat> right? But just, again, just chug up half an inch, right? Good, okay? Um, anyways, hope that's helpful. Crazy, crazy times out there, folks. The world is changing right in front of us, right in front of us. Okay, let me tell you about the soldier tank bat. It's backwards, I guess, because I'm, I'm looking at the camera. Anyways, the soldier tank bat. This is the heaviest swinging bat for 2024. It is not uncommon at all for us to see a bat that is brand new in the industry to come out heavy. Now, that goods one or that goods two piece down there is 9800 MOI, uh, something like the uh, the Warstick um, hybrid. That's like 9600. Again, come down to the Mach That's 9200. All these bats swing about the same. Okay, the goods might be a little bit more, but again, it's all right in the neighborhood. This guy is like 10,000. Um, not uncommon at all for brand new bats that come out. Um, frankly, and I don't, I don't know much about Soldier other than the fact it's, it's very possible that these companies, um, they source this bat from overseas, they put their sticker on it, they know it can get BB Core approved, and so that's what they do. I don't know if that's the story with the Soldier tank. My guess is yes, we've been doing this long enough to see when a, a company you've kind of never heard of comes out with a brand new BB Core bat, they likely sourced it from somewhere overseas. Um, and you know, they got it for $40 a unit and they're selling it for 400 or 399. I'm not trying to, or 299, whatever it is. I'm not trying to bag on these guys. I think they're doing a great job, but I'm just telling you that is the nature of the beast. So we usually find bats like this come out. They're very heavy. And then within about two years, assuming that they make a lot of money because they convince someone to go swing this and tell everybody to swing it. So they go and sell a lot of them and they make it, then they can revamp it and make it lighter. But until then, um, these bats always tend to be heavy, so we're not surprised at all to see this thing come in at 10,000. And we're not surprised at all either to hear people online saying, oh, the bat swing's so light, it's so balanced. And it's not. People just don't know what they're talking about. Because they can't, because this is not how you figure out the swing weight. Like, oh, yeah, this is it. Uh, again, yeah, but, but if you want this bat and you want it to swing lighter, this is how you do it. You go like this, and then you kind of you just go like that, okay? Ta-da, light swinging bat, okay? You got it. All right, barrel profile size is, a, I think, a really good example of something of just because we can measure it, should we measure it? Um, yeah, really, really good question. Um, I, I would just point out again uh, that that's on them, not on me. Like, they're, they're the ones claiming that there's better bats. They're the ones trying to sort of subtly compare bats to other ones and say, we're better because of this. Well, um, and, and that's fine. They can, they can do that. But if there, if there is a better bat than another, then there are differences, and it's our job to measure those differences and report them. So... Um, on a personal note, do we, th how important do we think barrel profile size is? Uh, it, it clearly matters to some extent. I mean, you wouldn't get a broomstick up there and be like, well, it hits the ball really far if you can just find the barrel. There seems to be some correlation between the size of the barrel and the size of your ability to find it. I mean, that doesn't seem like rocket science, right? So, uh, it, it, so with that said, it clearly matters to some extent. 
Does it really matter like the eighth of an inch or what, whatever it might be? The biggest barrel up here, that is to say when we take this ring right here and we put this ring around a bat, at what point does it stop? At what point does this bat, does, does, does it stop? The, the bats with the biggest BB core barrels, this is a two and five eight. I guess this ring's probably a little less than two and five eights from Mizuno, obviously. Funny enough, we don't have a Mizuno bat up here. They still make bats, but who knows how. Uh, but anyways, they do. Uh, maybe they're great. We'll never know. We don't have them. In any case, this ring, at what point? The biggest barrel here, these two bats down here at the end, if you can see, that's the Maruchi Cat Composite and the, and the Rawlings Icon. Those bats have a nine and a half inch max barrel is what we call it, meaning that for, for a full nine and a half inches, that bat, it, this thing stops about right there. That goes all the way down here to a bat like the Marucci F5 at the very end that has the same barrel profile as the 44 Pro. And let me show you what that one looks like. And don't, don't freak out, okay? Don't cross these guys off your list because I just want to explain this to you really quick. But there you go. Here's, I'll tell you, I'll show you when this one stops. Same story with the F5, by the way. If I get the Marucci F5, that's the bat on the very far. It, it officially does not reach that maximum number. Now, what, what does that mean? I'm not sure. But look, I mean, look, if we were to look really close, if I can get this thing to focus, look how, look how tight that is. I mean, it's right, the truth is it's right on the edge of that barrel from like right there. It just has this really sort of, not so much a long taper, it just never peaks out. It really never gets bigger than where it is until right there. And so I would say it's max barrel starts maybe, I don't know, seven, six, seven, eight inches, but it just never, and that you can kind of hear it scraping along. But So does that mean that because we can measure it, we should, and this should get a knock against it because it doesn't have as big of a barrel profile? Same with the F5, the Marucci Cat Vanta down here at Cat X doesn't have that big of a barrel. Um, well, again, if all other things are equal, if exit speed's equal, if uh, um, the feel is equal, if the... Uh, the price was equal. If all that stuff was exactly the same, would you want a bat with a bigger profile or a smaller profile? I think everybody on the planet would say, I want one with a bigger profile. Why not? Why not give yourself more chances to hit? But the problem is, I think in this case, you're measuring like millimeters. Is that much of a difference? I don't know. Maybe it's a difference between a foul ball, keeps you alive in the count. Maybe once out of you know, a million swings, you're going to get a little tick, little tick foul ball on a bat up there that you wouldn't hear. I don't know. Is that worth it to you? I don't know. Is it a distinction without a difference or a difference without a distinction? Yeah, we're going to figure out how to say that. Probably is our guess. Um, but in any case, enjoy, enjoy the pictures here of these bats um, and their barrel sizes. And that's what we're looking at for 2024 BB Core Barrel Profiles. So again, if we're trying to look for differences, one way to look for differences is to measure the actual length of the bat and what we mean by that is if we go from right underneath the knob all the way down to where the 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 barrel it feels like it officially dies and it, what i mean by that is some of the some of the caps if you look closely they sort of like really angle in so for example if we were to look at a bat like the goods right look, look, look at the goods it really dies like right here this becomes i mean i guess you could foul a ball off with that but we're sort of measuring between the, the entire length of the bat, so that little spot there, all the way up to where the barrel actually starts. So that would be like right underneath this right here to the length of the actual bat right there. Now, if we, if we do that and put them in order, this is what you get. So uh, the difference between the shortest bat and the longest bat is about an a little over an inch, so 1.25 inches, which seems significant, but is a little bit of a thing. And that's because these bats here, look at those. These are your axe bats. They just, you know, we don't really quite know where to measure them. Um, but if you measure them from there, then they end up being about an inch and a quarter shorter than a bat down here, like the rope, um, which is actually, even counting the knob, the rope is 32 and a half inches, 32 and a half inches. I would say the only set of bats that really are different outside of obviously the axe because that handle sort of throws off the way that you can measure that. Although I guess it does kind of make the bat shorter, which is kind of an interesting thing. Um, in any case, are the are the, the Demarini bats. We've talked about this before in other videos, but Demarini does a really good job 
uh, again, good, of, of making their bat short. So these 33 inch bats, for example, the actual length of the barrel from like right there to right there, the actual length of the barrel is like 31.75 or 25? Point, point 0.75. That's small. Like they are measurably different. If you were to look here, uh, in fact, if I were, let's just take, let's take the longest bat here, which is the rope, and let's put it next to this bat. So look, I mean, look at the difference between these two bats. Now it looks like, you know, I guess if you're counting the end cap, then maybe that's how we can get to 33. But in terms of the actual bat length, like the actual barrel, uh, look at the difference between the rope, which is like a 32 and a half measured from underneath the knob on a 33 inch bat. And this guy's like 31.75. So, so again, there, there's your order. Is that useful information? Uh, you know, again, I don't know. It's the company saying that their bats are different and better. It's, it's uh, people who are endlessly reviewing, like comparing bats and saying this one's better than that one. It's, I feel like that's on them to prove that in fact the bat is, is better. All we can do is just measure differences and say, well, this is the difference. So maybe there's something in your mind that gives you the idea that says, hey, I don't, uh, I, I like, a, I, like a, I need more barrel, like, like the rope versus a goods. Um, well, if that's, if that's it and all things, uh, all other things are equal, then it seems like a great reason to get a bat like the rope over a bat like something else, assuming that you also think that everything else is the same. So there you go. That is barrel length in 2024 BB Core bats in order, right? There are a few things that get people more excitable than compression testing in BB Core baseball bats. The NCAA before every tournament does compression testing and if it's over 1250 for an alloy bat or i'm sorry under 1250 for an alloy bat or under a thousand for a composite bat it gets disqualified now they do that test three times they spin the bat each time and if it's below those numbers i think you can fail it once out of the three times in any case uh the bat then gets disqualified and so people then start to say okay well if a bat is more compressible that means it has better trampoline effect and it hits the ball farther I think, I think at a really like layman, simple level, that, that, that could maybe generally be true. But, but in actual practice, it's just not as, it's not as obvious as that. It's not as like simple as just saying, well, what the, what's the compression? Therefore, this bat hits the ball further than other bats. And, and here's really the reason for that. That's because everybody's swing speed in the collision is different. And so when you start to put different pressures on the bat, and this just has one consistent pressure, it isn't fair to say that when there's a collision speed at the NCAA level, for example, of a 95 mile an hour fastball and a 95 mile an hour swing speed, you're talking 180 to 190 mile an hour collision. That's just gonna, that's gonna react differently in the bat than when you get something like a 65 mile an hour pitch on a 75 mile an hour swing speed, which honestly, have you been to a high school game before? And I know there's varsity level stuff and guys can throw, you know, touching 90 sometimes, but most, most varsity games, the guy might be throwing 80 and the kid might be th swinging 75. And the truth is you go to like a, a JV game or a sophomore where the majority of baseball is played in the BB core space and that kid's throwing 65 and the swing speed 65. And so your collision is now 120 miles an hour. And so it just isn't fair to say that the collision and that trampoline reacts the same as now, all that said, we did take some compressions of bats, which you can see here on the screen. Um, we report these on our website. You can go look at them. Again, how predictive are these of actual exit speeds? Not, not very good. Um, back to our point, it just doesn't seem very predictive of exit speeds. The other thing worth mentioning, since we're talking about compression, is just how manipulatable these things are. And, and let me show you what I mean. So here's the Voodoo One uh, from a couple of years ago, obviously. Let me, let me get the compression. You put this compression inside of this, this little section for it here. You push this thing down to the full six inch mark. You tighten this guy down until it shows zero on here. And I'll show you that here in just one second. So you tighten it down until it's at the zero and then you pull this thing up, right? That, that's exactly how they do it in the NCAA. They do this, they spin it, they do it, they spin it, they do it, they spin it, they do it three different times. And then you get some number on here, right? And so this number right here shows a whopping, what is that? Like 17, 1800. Now, if you were to talk about, no, not, not, not 1800, I'm sorry, like 1650, I'm sorry. So like 1650. Talk to anybody about how hot they think this bat is. People would say this bat's super hot. Again, 1650 is, is actually really high. So big, big deal. But, but let, me, let me show you a little trick, okay? Um, ready? Like this. I'll, I'll, lo I'll loosen this. Okay, I'll take it out. I'll go like this. I'll breathe on it and I'll go like this really fast. Let me just get the heat rolling. I'm heat rolling it, guys. 
heat rolling it. Okay, you see my heat roll? Okay, here we go, ready? All right, tighten this guy down to zero. Here we go. Yeah, buddy, look at that. Look at that. I just brought it down to like 1200. What? I've got some serious skills there. Um, how, do you, how did I do that? Well, I, I, heat, I, I heat rolled it. I heat rolled it. No, that's not what I did. I actually just didn't put it all the way in the compressor. See that? See how it looks like it's in the compressor? I just moved it down the compressor by an inch. I just moved it down. I didn't put it all the way in, in, in there. But that's it. It almost looks like it is, right? It almost looks like it is, but it's not. I just moved it down and, and it dropped 500. So one of the problems we always have with these is that they're just so manipulable. If you don't do it exactly right, if you're trying to make the number look a certain way, it's, it's really not hard to make it look a certain way. So it, it, be, it becomes kind of hokey, it becomes super inconsistent, and uh, we, we just don't, we don't like it for that reason. And we think just because you can measure something, people then kind of think, oh, because we can measure it, therefore it must mean something. But I think this is, in lots of ways, this is a classic case of just because we can measure it, should we be measuring it? I don't know. I think at the NCAA level, they have to do something at the field, right? I mean, if, if they're trying to control for hot bats, they got to do something. They definitely can't, you know, travel around with a ball cannon and laser timers to make sure that the bat isn't bouncing hard enough. And I do think at some level, the compression of it, three different spots, a, sort of a hard line, I think is one way, is one way to manage uh, if bats have been tampered with. Although we could talk about how alloy bats really can't be rolled anyways, because you don't want to mess with the structure of them. They're never hotter than the first the first hit and compression isn't the answer, but but that's maybe for another another very long video. In any case, that's compression. This is the compressor. These are the numbers that we got for compression. If these things float your boat, then uh, congratulations. You can now look at some compression numbers. Uh, we report these on our site as well. So, all right, uh, 2024 BB Corbat compression. Another way to think about the way bats are different, and we think actually are, are very, very useful, and maybe sometimes, uh, I don't know if it's underlooked, but, um, but maybe, maybe not as obvious uh, or talked about as it should. Maybe, maybe it is. Anyways, it's just the type of bat, right? So, and we're talking about hybrid bats right here in the middle, composite, two-piece composite bats, and then single-piece bats. In the BB core space, BB core bats uh, tend to be single pieces. These are just the cheaper ones to make. Um, easier to get into the market. So you see a lot of new companies like the Soldier Tank, for example, maybe the Victus Vandal. Um, they do a really good job um, simply because a single piece alloy bat is easier to make than a two piece composite bat in terms of just the timing that it takes um, to sort of put together something that actually works well and get it passed in the test and stuff like that. But what, what they actually do sort of functionally, the difference is feel. So it tends to be that bats that are two-piece composite tend to feel a little better. The composite helps sort of dampen sting as well as that two-piece composite connection. In the past, it was pretty consistent that uh, connection pieces on, on BB core bats in two-piece composites were pretty flexible. So you could expect that like every hit here felt fantastic. Uh, is that true now? I don't know. So, some are pretty stiff. The, the icon is pretty stiff. The rope is kind of stiff. But that's like the Meta and the Cat X are still, I think we think pretty flexible. But in any case, you can kind of get a feel difference there. Uh, hybrid bats right here tend to be pretty stiff bats, although they are two-piece connections. They don't nearly feel as stiff as these single-piece alloy bats, but they do have some flex in there. Of course, uh, by hybrid, what we mean is, for those that kind of new here, alloy barrels. So the barrels are alloy, the handles are composite. In, in most cases, uh, companies take the composite handle from their composite bat and put it on a bat, and then their alloy barrel from their alloy bat and put it on there, and then it becomes their hybrid. Huh, see, see what they did there? So that, that's your hybrid bat. So in any case, one way to think about differences, if we're trying to find distinctions between bats, what is actually different? These bats are an easy way to categorize that. If you want a stiff feel with maybe a little bit of a smaller barrel profile or barrel profile doesn't matter to you too much and want to save some money, then down here is fantastic. Single piece alloy bats. If you want sort of what a company might believe is the latest and greatest and it's going to feel fantastic on every hit, then you're looking at a two piece composite bat. We find that smaller, newer kids tend to do better here because they get more confidence in bats that feel good. Um, stronger, bigger kids tend to do well with a, a single piece bat just because they don't, it, the better you get, the less the bat matters. And so it, the bat doesn't have to feel great or have this massive barrel or, or, you know, uh, all, all those kinds of things. It's, you know, the kid's going to, the kid's going to find the barrel no matter what. 
Hybrids are sort of that combination of those two things. You get a good feel, but you still get sort of a hot out of the wrapper barrel. It doesn't require any work in, although composite bats these days really don't require work ins either. But in any case, you get sort of that combination. Um, if you look at NCAA, so these are big, strong hitters. Most of them prefer bats like this or like single piece alloy bats. In fact, very few NCAA and big time hitter guys who have, you know, 100 mile an hour exit speed like two piece composite bats. In fact, I've never found a guy who has a massive swing and is like, give me. Give me that, you know, uh, that Marucci Cat X composite or whatever it is. There, there, there are occasionally things, but when we get to smaller kids, especially like, you know, that if you're 13 to 16 and this is kind of your new experience, BB Core, you're just trying to catch up to pitch speeds. We find these bats work all the time and they're absolutely poo-pooed on, on the internet. Um, why? I'm not sure. Again, because probably because kids who are who have 80 mile an hour exit velo and 75 mile an hour swing speed don't make a lot of TikTok videos. And so a lot of people just don't talk about the bats. But the truth is the vast majority of hitters are 80 mile an hour exit speed and 75 mile an hour swing speed. Like that's that's the bulk of BB core hitters. Not everyone, turns out, is a 200 pound, 105 mile an hour exit velo D1 player. Um, regardless of what the internet and advertisements may want to tell you. Turns out most kids are pretty normal. Most kids are just 16 trying to figure out uh, how the heck they're going to catch up to an 85 mile an hour fastball for the first time uh, when freshman ball starts, um, you know, th this in, in two weeks, right? Yeah. Welcome, welcome to real life, the life, right? Put these in order of price by category. So most expensive to least expensive composite bat. Although these three are the same, the Cadex bat, the black version of this is $20 more. These bats, again, these all range in different prices. These two are the same price. That's the most expensive, the goods. And then they kind of work down here. And then the most expensive single piece alloy bat um, are these two from DeMarini. Again, why? Well, go back and look at our price section. We'll talk about why that's the case. And then you got the Cadex, the Mach AI, the Bone Saber, the Atlas, the Tank, the Victus, the Mav 1, the Hawk, the uh, Strato, the Pro 44, and the Marucci F5. Yo, just know we're about to go off, okay? If there's any part of this video that I think uh, that gets our blood boiling, uh, it is about the price of bats. But before, before I get into that, on the wall behind me going from this way to this way are the most ex the cheapest to the most expensive bats for 2024. The Marucci F5 is $130 or something like that. You have this grouping of bats right here that are like 250, and then it works its way all the way up to this Marucci Cadex. Now that's the Cadex, not the Cadex Vanta, but as we said in other parts of the video, these are the same bats as the black version, although their pricing is like $20 more. So this bat here at the end is $519.99, which we're just gonna call $520. So that's your range from $130, a Marucci bat, by the way, all the way to another Marucci bat of $520. So before we go completely off, uh, and, and if there was any part of the video we wish people watched, honestly, we, we do, we, we hope it is this, um, because we have, a, we, have, we have some feelings about the price of bats. There's two questions that I think everyone should be asking. One is why does a bat uh, cost what it does? Um, and I'll answer that for you very, very, very easily. And the second question is, is why do bats keep going up in price? Both of them are 100% not what the industry wants you to know or understand or accept. And I'm here to tell you uh, the truth, okay? My degree is in economics. Uh, the, you, you'll learn like in Economics 101, the reason people pay a price for a product is because, or, or excuse me, the reason a product is its price is because people will pay it. The end. It has nothing to do with the price of paint, of customs costs, of uh, the cost of shipping because COVID crates went up. No, literally nothing to do. The price someone will pay, the price something is, is because that is the, that is the price that people will pay. Don't confuse costs and price. Uh, now the costs of what these things are, are, uh, I don't want to say completely independent, but, but they, they are independent of what the price actually is. The margin on bats is set by demand, right? So that's, that's the, the, the cost to the actual price, like what it costs them to make it to the actual price, right? We call this the margin, right? Um, the reason that the company is in business is because the costs are lower than the price. That, that's why these companies exist. That's why, the, that's why the model works as it does, right? That people are willing to ultimately pay a price more than it actually does to produce them. But this margin right here only has something to do with people's demand, it, the, the amount that someone is willing to pay. So don't, don't accept for one second when a company says, oh man, our costs, our costs went up, 
I, well, I don't care about your cost. Now, if you're telling me your cost went beyond your, your margin, eh, I, I, there, you, you could make maybe a long-term argument for that. But today's price, the, the reason this bat costs prices the way that it does is because people are willing to pay it. Hard stop, the end. No more conversation. Stop giving me crap about we reinvented the knob and put a fortified knob in there. Therefore, it's $800 more. Or our war we have a new warranty. And therefore, our shut up. Shut your mouth, okay? It's not true. The reason it is a price is because people will pay it. The end. That's it, okay? There's one. Number two, why does it keep going up? Why does it keep going up? Again, it's not because of the price of paint or the price of the knob or the price of the new end cap or the price of this fancy uh, alloy that is literally the same alloy you've been using for the last 15 years, okay? And you just gave it a new name. Nothing to do with that. In fact, the truth is that alloy is probably cheaper today than it was for you 15 years ago. So don't, don't talk to me about that. Why is the price going up? It is 100%, 100% because they have convinced you and me and the industry that their bat is different. That's it. Their bat is different. And they've can and, and so go watch go watch a YouTube video, right? Every YouTube video I've seen on a bat in the last feels like forever is comparing this bat and this bat. It's this bat versus this bat. Again, it assumes there's a better one, and, and, and if there's an assumption that there's a better one, there's an assumption there's a different one. And if it is different, it should cost more. So look at these two bats right here. Marucci Cat Composite uh, Connect. This is the hybrid version from Marucci the hybrid version from DeMarine. These bats have, I'm not gonna use the word collusion, but these bats have systematically increased in price over the last three years. Systematically, like as in together, okay? And then and I'll let uh, uh, attorneys figure out whatever the heck that's supposed to mean. Um, but they have, as have all these bats in their category, they have all like shifted this way, right? This bat today, uh, 420 bucks. This bat, the Cadex Vanta version, $400. Last year, these bats, if I, you can go look it up, but you will see 350, 370, right? These, it's something that affects, but you, you can track the price of these bats over the last uh, four iterations and tell me how much they've actually changed. I mean, really? Has the goods changed at all? Has the goods changed since that green version? Has it gotten better? I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think anybody's going to say this bat's better than the green version or the black version, right? Um, has the Cat X Connect since the Cat 8 Connect? gotten better? Eh, I don't know. Anyways, besides, that's besides the point. The point right now is that they've, they've systematically increased in price because this, these guys keep being told by themselves and by everybody on the internet that their bat is better. So they say, well, we're, we're better than the Kinect. We're $20 better than the Kinect. And the Kinect's like, no, we're as good as their bat. And that's, and that's it. And that systematically happens. Look at, look at this Voodoo One right here, right? I mean, this Voodoo One's now $400. That bat was $279, $279 in 2017. And go, go tell me what, what is different. I mean, the knob used to work in 2017, and then by 2022, it stopped working. It broke all the time, and then they fixed it, changed the warranty, increased the price by, what, $150? Why? Why is it $150 more? What, what, what does the bat do differently today than it did in 2017, besides convincing a bunch of people online that the bat is different? What, what has it done? Besides convince you that it's different. And so if the bat, in fact, is better, the bat must be different. And that is the name of the industry. That's the, that's the name of the game, right? Convince you that it's different. Um, and that's what marketing does. So there's, there's some added edge. There's, some, there's something unique. There's something different. And when they continue to do that, they will continue to systematically raise the price. And then other companies will match them. And there will be this ever-loving march into $1,000 bats. And I used to say at the beginning of this decade, 2010, I wrote an article that said the biggest, the biggest, upgrade, the, 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 the biggest uh, changes for the last decade in bats. Like what, what happened? Um, and I, I mentioned in that that it would be crazy by the end of the decade, so 2029, whatever, uh, to see a, a $1,000 bat. At the time, I thought that was crazy to say that because bat, like that, the most expensive bat was like, I mean, like the Mako Tor could come out, it was 500 bucks. But the most, like, like two piece composite bats were like, f like, like, 449 kind of thing, or like, like 399, whatever it was. But I have, in the last four years, now it's 2023, we're already seeing $550 bats. There is no doubt in my mind that by the end of this decade, we're gonna see $1,000 bats. Why? Because people will pay it because they want an advantage. They believe there's an advantage for their kid. And two, because they will continue to convince people that their bat is different. And as videos come out and as Instagram posts come out and as social media comes out and as marketing continues to get pushed, that the idea that the bat is different 
they will continue to systematically raise their price until people stop paying it. And my experience with travel baseball and fast pitch is that people have no sense of stopping and paying for anything. They are going to do whatever it takes to give what they believe is their kid an advantage. Um, I told you this was gonna be a rant, um, but that is the absolute 100% truth as Bat Digest and Brian Durier see it uh, when it comes to 2024 BB Corps bats. And the only way to stop it is to try to give people the best information possible in saying, is it different? Is the bat different? And if it's not different, then why in the world would you pay more money for it? I don't know. That may, again, maybe it's some status thing. Maybe it's some sense of like, who cares? It's just money. Fair enough. And that's, that's a fantastic sentiment that all these companies would love you to have. Um, and I'm not trying to blame it on any particular individual, but I am saying that as we sort of individually make this decision to say, who cares, it's $50 more, um, it is, and maybe like subconsciously, it is a little bit different. As long as we continue to believe that, um, we're, we're gonna find these bats systematically increase in price until by 2030, uh, they're $1,000 a piece. And we're all saying, well, but it's, it's, it's different. It's different than last year's because we're comparing them head to head and saying, well, I've chosen the winner. Um, and you know, that digest is, is responsible for them that too. We have our, our number one articles on our website are the, are the articles that, cause people search for best. They search for, you know, best USA bat or best bat for a nine year old or best bat for a power hitter. Like that's what people search for. People aren't searching for is the bat better uh, or is the bat different, right? That's not what they search for. They say, give, give me the best one. Cause there's just natural assumption in the industry that a bat is better. And they might be, but are they? Are they really? I mean, you're, you're watching this video. Uh, you've watched more than one video on YouTube, I assume. Uh, you've read more than one article. Are, are they actually better? And if they're not, if you can't honestly answer that question, why, why, are, you paying, why are you paying more money? Well, and, and in fact, why are you still watching the video? I mean, that's like a weird thing to say during a video, but why are you watching the video still? Just go buy a bet. Let's, let's move on with our lives. Go clickety-click, go something. Go, go, and you know, and, and frankly, why not go buy a used bet? Why not go to eBay? Why not go to Sideline Swap and be like, this bat is two years ago and it's literally a third of the price. Why not, why not just do that? I don't know, man. I don't know. People don't because people want the best. People uh, believe bats are different uh, and people uh, want to believe that, that spending more money will make, give them some kind of advantage. Um, at least I hope not. I hope that's not true. I'm being a little sarcastic, so... Uh, in any case, I told you it's going to be a rant, bro. I told you it's going to be a rant. So there's my 10-minute uh, rant on bat pricing. Let me actually show you the bat prices so, you know, we can move on with our lives. You're going to have to go look for yourself the exact prices. Got out to the top, off the top of my head. But just know that they're in order and they're kind of grouped by how much they are. So, for example, the F5 is $130. Fantastic bat. Um, $130, folks. Love, lovely. $250 for this set of bats right here. Um, should I name them all? Or you can you can see what these things are. That's the, the Warhawk, the Pro 44, and the Axe Strato. Uh, what are we at? Probably 299 here. So that's the Tank, the Victus, and the Lev 3. We're now probably at 250 is my guess. The, the Atlas and the Bone Saber, probably at 270 now. The Bone Saber Hyper, maybe 280, and the Mach AI. You now have the grouping of $400 bats, the good single piece, the Cat X. Again, these bats love. They, Marucci and DiMarini, they love to track each other's price on their, on their high-level bat. It is unbelievable to me. In any case, $400, bucks, so you got a bat like the Voodoo One, the Axe Avenge Pro, a Hybrid Pro, the Goods, a single piece, and Marucci Cat X. We call it the Vanta. Here's your gap again, $20 gap, once again, between a three, uh, $450 CADEX Connect and the goods, which is at 370. You then have your whopping $500 bats, if you can believe it, uh, that there's three of these now, like without blinking, right? You got the rope, the icon, and the meta, and then you have a five. Now, in real life, this CADEX composite is $500 as well, but we're trying to show that it's the CADEX Vanta, actually. So uh, the Vanta's, they put $20 more because black paint's more expensive, guys. Didn't you know? Didn't you hear the price of black paint went up? Therefore, All right, now that you've seen us uh, talk about individual or, or maybe collective differences between the bats, again, that's on them, not on us. They're the ones saying their bat is different. Uh, the question you probably should have is, it, are bats different? What, were there enough differences in there besides just the price, which is clearly like the indication that the company thinks the bat is different and therefore better enough? Um, is there any indication in those lengths or swing weights that you felt like uh, really drove you to one bat or another? Um, you know, our, our general sense, and not, and not to like give too much sort of uh, op-ed on, the, on the, the general sense, but 
I think it I think it really is hard. It's really hard to find sort of some measurable differences between a bat. I mean, maybe maybe the barrel size matters a lot to you. There were there were some definitely some differences there. Um, type of bat matters, but still there's huge category. There's a bunch of single piece bats. There's a bunch of um, uh, two piece composite bats. There's 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 a bunch of options. Uh, price definitely is a differentiating factor, but that is sort of the indicator that the company thinks the bat is different. So it's like, well, if if all things are equal, why am I spending more money? I think I think you should have still questions. I don't know that anything that we have done has necessarily answered um, that question. If I'm being honest with you, are bats different so far? I mean, there are some differences, but uh, do those distinctions mean anything? Do they actually have any practical value when it comes to you? Uh, getting in the box. And then we had this crazy idea about six months ago. We're like, we don't, we don't need to paint them. All we really need to do is we just need to put black tape on them. Like if we could get black um, athletic tape and tape them up, will that change performance? Will that change swing weight a lot? Well, it turns out, and we'll we'll let you watch sort of it play out for us, but it turns out it, it changes the swing weight a little bit. It adds about three or 400 points uh, to the swing weight. Our thought is that if it adds three to 400 uh, points to the swing weight, but it does it for every bat, that that's okay, uh, that it's still worth trying these bats in black tape and do all of our own hitting and testing with black bat. Now the hitters will not know what bat they are. Um, we're gonna encourage them not to like rip the tape off and look. Uh, my guess is these are just normal high school hitters. Um, they don't like review bats for a living. So I think they will struggle to know which bats are which. I, I am fascinated with the idea of trying to see how well they, and they, they've hit a lot of bats, but can they just, can they tell? Can you look at it? But I wanna show you a couple of videos that we took first, proving that the video, uh, that the bat doesn't change that much when we, when we wrap it with black tape. And so we're gonna get, you know, similar performance. And if we do increase the swing weight by a couple hundred points, then we at least do it for every bat. And therefore it should sort of be, it should still, still be a valid comparison, so. And then let's go, uh, let's go measure it and see how close we get to that 31.1 ounces and a swing weight of 9,400. Then we measure the, the weight as we're balanced on the six inch mark, um, as well as the 24 inch marks. Okay, so we did the math and as you can see this, this is the swing weight at six inches right here, that we have increased the swing weight by wrapping it by about 300 points or a little over 300 points on um, um, about 9,400. So that means we've increased it by just under 4%. All right, there we have it. The 2024 BB Corvettes, all wrapped, baby. The first blind test uh, that we know of. We were gonna, like I said, we were gonna do this years ago for then COVID hit, but uh, we had this idea to wrap them up in black tape. And, you know, I think they look, I think they look awesome. So they're all color coded by the handle. We have it all written down because honestly, we did like three of them. We forgot we were them down. We were like, oh crap, what was that bat? And it's, it's actually really, really hard to tell. There's some that are maybe a little more obvious, but you know, 2024 BB Core, baby. I've been waiting my whole life for this, I feel like. The blue and white bat. What bat this is, nobody will ever know. Uh, blue and white sounds like this. That was loud. That's what I felt like that was. Okay, yellow, yellow and orange, no, yellow and red. Yellow and red bat sounds like this. Yellow bat. Yellow bat sounds like this. That was a, that was a, that was a rake right there, by the way. Orange bat. Orange bat 
sounds like this. Oh, I was totally expecting that to be metal. That was not metal. I do not know what that bat is. But there you go. All right, the old green and purple. The old green and purple bat sounds like this. Mashy. Okay, blue bat. Blue bat sounds like this. It's good hit, honestly. Orange and red bat. Sounds like this. Orange and tan bat with the axe handle. Huh. Assuming this is the strato. Couldn't tell though. Sounds like this. Yeah. Yeah, that's a strato. If I uh, purple bat. Purple bat sounds like this. 100% composite. Sounds beautiful. Blue and green bat. The old, you know, blue and green bat sounds like this. Blue bat sounds like this. Green bat, lime green, sounds like this. Black, sounds like this. Yeah, kind of missed it. Yellow and blue bat, sounds like this. I don't know what that is, but I flipping like it. Tan. The old tan bat. Sounds like this. Huh. Okay. The old yellow and pink, or is that purple? I don't know. Sounds like this. That's pink. The red and blue bat. Sounds like this. The white bat sounds like this. The tan and black bat sounds like that. The old red bat sounds like this. Looks hard to me. Red and orange bat, any guesses what that bat is? Nope, I have no idea. No idea? Swing weight? Uh, like... Out of 10? Six. Hit hard? Yep. This is the old white bat? Yeah. N name? No clue. Weight? Uh, medium. Score? And seven out of 10. Okay, blue and white bat. What, what's your guess on what bat that is? Uh, maybe a single piece cat. Okay, okay. Light, heavy, where would you put it? In the middle. Okay. Yeah. Overall rating? Five. Out of 10? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that was the red bat. Yep. Best guess, what bat is that? Uh, it's on the Cat X composite. Okay, okay. Uh, what, uh, light or heavy? Uh, a little bit on the heavier side, I thought. Total rating? Uh, I'll give it a six. Uh, that's what? The red and yellow bat? Yeah. What, what bat is it? Uh, is the 44 in here? It is in there, yeah. That's my guess for the Okay, 44. 44, light or heavy? Light. Total rating? I give it a seven. Nice strong swing. What bat is that? Yellow bat? We call it yellow bat. Your best guess? <laughs> I'm gonna guess the cat X again. <laughs> uh, light, heavy, where you put it? Uh, light. 
for the lighter. Okay, and total rating? Uh, I give it a seven. That's hard. Yeah. Red, what, what bat is that, orange bat? It's orange bat. We're calling it orange bat, and your guess on what that bat is? I genuinely have no idea. No idea what's going on. Uh, light, heavy, where'd you put it? I put it on the lighter end again. Okay. Out, out of 10? Probably a uh, six. This is calling this Feels good. red and purple bat? Yep. Or no, purple and green bat, what am I saying? Yeah. Any guesses on what bat that is? Uh, I'm gonna go with the Voodoo, that's my guess. The Voodoo One, the Voodoo Bat, what, what bat are you talking about? The Voodoo One. Light, heavy? Light. Ready? Seven out of 10. I'm ready. Nice hard swing. Uh, what color is that bat? That's light blue? Light blue. Our light blue bat. Yep. What is it? What bat is it? Well, it's the Meta. It's the Meta, all right. Yep. Uh, light, heavy? Uh, medium, in the middle. Out of 10? Probably a seven. All right. Green and blue. Green and blue bat. Any ideas what bat that is? No clue. No clue. No. Single, what do you think? Composite? Alloy? What would you say? Uh, probably an alloy. Uh, lighter head. Single piece. Light. Light. Rating? Uh, 7 out of 10. Stroke, baby. This is the old orange and tan bat. Yep. Any guesses in the whole yep. wide world what bat that is? I'm going to go with the axe bat. The axe bat. Yep. Uh, yeah, good guess. Which one? No idea. No, just, just some. Okay, how, how can you even tell though? Uh, yeah. The handle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what? Uh, light, heavy? Light. Rating? Uh, 7 out of 10. That seemed hard. Yeah. What bat is that? Go with the Cat X composite. Okay. Yep. Swing light and heavy, where you at? Medium. Rating? I'm gonna go. Uh, 8 out of 10. The old lime green bat. Yep. What is it? I'm going with the goods. Light heavy. A little bit heavy. And then 6 out of 10. Nice. We call that the black bat. The black wrap on the black bat. Any ideas in the world what bat that is? I'm gonna guess the 44. That's the 44, all right. Mm -hmm. And? Light, mm -hmm. light and probably eight out of 10. Eight out of 10, yeah. all right. That was hot. It was a ground out a second, but it was hot. Any ideas what bat that is? Go with the Cat X, again, composite. <laughs> composite, all right. You already guessed that one. Cat X Connect. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Swing weight? Heavy. Uh, six out of 10. Nice. This is the old yellow and blue bat. Yep. Any ideas what it is? No idea. No guesses? No nothing? No. Heavy light? Light. Rating? Six out of 10. Nice. Yep. This is the tan bat. Yeah. Name? Go with the, the single piece goods. And the... Weight light, I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. That was hard. Yep. Yellow and pink bat, name? Uh, sounding kind of loud, so I'm gonna go with a cat X. <laughs> uh, weight? Light, Ready? and then a seven out of 10. It's like every time I video you, you hit that pole. That's the red and blue bat? Yeah. Red and blue bat. What is it? What bat is it? No idea again. How uh, light? How light? I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. Wow, a 9 out of a 10. A mystery bat. Yeah. You have no idea what that is. 9 out of 10. No clue. Nice. This is the black and tan bat. Yeah. And the name of it is? No clue. Mm -hmm. Same. Light? Light. Mm -hmm. And 7 out of 10.
we're about to show you some exit speeds, which everybody gets all jacked about. They got their paper out, pencil, they're ready to start writing stuff down. I'm telling you right now, throw it away. We're still gonna show you exit speeds, but let me just, just real quick, okay? The difference between the, the hottest and the slowest BB Corbat for any given hitter, about four or five miles an hour. That's the average number across 20 different BB Corbats. If you take the top 15 bats, it's more like three miles an hour. If you take the top 10 bats, it's more like two miles an hour. If you take the top five bats, it's more like one mile an hour. And, and the hit tracks that we use, as well as like Rapsoda or anything else that you use, have the standard error already of plus or minus, so a gap of two miles an hour. And I'm telling you, within the top 10 bats, it's about two miles an hour different. And the truth is, if we came back in here in a month with the same hitter, same bat, same baseballs, we would probably get a different order. And so it's, it's sort of unfair for me to say this is the hot bat. In fact, I think it's sort of, sort of unfair for anyone to go out there and do some kind of head-to-head -head comparison and then use this phrase, hot bat. The truth is, if we take averages across hitters, we black out the bats, they don't know what's coming, they have consistent hits, they don't have an incentive in the game. The truth is, bats are consistently, consistently performing the same across BB Core, especially when we start controlling for swing weight and bat size. That is the truth. Now, with that said, we know everybody comes here, they want to see what bat kids did the best with, and that seems fair. Like, we want to know, hey, what bat actually got hit harder and that's what we're going to show you. But I want you to take that with a grain of salt that I'm going to go show you some of these bats that I think are going to maybe blow your mind a little bit because I think the black bat test has worked fantastically. That is to say, I think bats have been hit harder than they usually would have because I think there's some psychological things going on when people pick up a bat and swing that we have never been able to account for until this year. So with that said, let me show you the winners of the 2024. And by winners, let's put that like in, it's like it's like the same way that Barry Bonds holds the home run title, right? It's the winners, okay? Yeah, sure, okay. Uh, but here we go. Okay, first hitter uh, was Daddy Hacks version, right? So the Daddy Hacks average results, the best, the best three bats, uh, second place and third place tied in terms of average exit speeds. The third, the fourth place one was 0.2 off a miles an hour. Didn't make the cut, but you know, it, it is what it is. I guess that's, that's the the name of the game we're gonna play. Second and third place for me. Are you ready? Here it is, the 2024 Easton Rope. I'll be dang. My, my, my brain's kind of blown. I, I don't think, again, I would have ever been super excited about this bat. Uh, you can't really feel the knob, that like soft knob in here when this tape's on there, although I guess it probably is working. But that was number two, I guess, tied with uh, number three. Number two is the, the old blue and green bat, the Bone Saber, baby. I love this bat. I was, so, I was so happy. I was so happy to find out. If you look real close, you can tell it's the Bone Saber, right? But a lot of people were like confusing it because they just didn't, because it just feels weird, but it's totally bone saber. You can see by sort of that really flat end cap they do as well. But that was my second best bat. Well, my second and third best bat in terms of just total exit speeds, which was 0.2 miles an hour higher than the fourth place one. And then for the bat that was number one and first place in terms of my exit speeds, that was 0.2 miles an hour faster than all the other bats out there, folks. Totally black. Can you tell which one it is? You're going to think it's the Voodoo One. It is not. It is the goods one piece right there. The old pink and green, lime green bat. Also really liked the feel of this bat. Thought it was fantastic. But random bats, man. I don't think a lot of people are gonna be jacked out of their mind about the goods one and the bone saver and the rope, but there you go. I mean, that's, that's what a black bat event will do, I think, is like it makes bats pop to the top that you have never, ever considered before. Okay, so I'm going to show you now the, the best hitter, the, the, the best bats. In terms of average exit velocity uh, for this hitter here, cra it's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. I, I'm not sure if he knows. It. These are your best three bats. When you were doing the blind, like, feedback, yeah. you said that this bat right here, you said this bat was the Meta. This bat was the Cat X. And I got to go back and look, but I think you had no idea what bat that was. Yeah. Do you want to change? You want to change your votes? Uh, no. Hi. I have no clue what any of the bots are. But. Yeah, it's it's weird. It's weirdly hard, and you honestly have hit a lot. Yeah, you've hit these bats a lot, but it's it's weirdly hard. Yeah. So this was number three. This is what I find crazy about the fact this bat right here. I feel like you actually used this bat last year, like in fall ball. I feel like for like like half a season. This is your third best BB core bat in terms of exit speeds. Yeah. It, you want to you want to change, it, and it is not. It is not the meta. Do you want to change, change your guess? Look at that connection piece. I mean, my guess would be the goods with that connection piece. No, it's composite. Knock the barrel. What bat did I use? 
I have no idea. Didn't you use the icon? Oh, I did use the icon. That's the icon, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's the icon. That's so weird. Yeah. So that's the bat. And you got it right, though. You were like, it's kind of a medium swing bat, big barrel, composite barrel. You got all that right. You just thought it was some other bat. Yeah. That's so weird. Okay, the next next bat, number two. I'm pretty sure, so this is not this is not the Cat X, but it's so much like the Cat X. It's like the sister company to the Cat X. I don't know if you knew that Marucci bought Victus at one point. Yeah. That that bat's called the Lev 3. That is the Vandal. Dang. And, but that handle, you can't tell right now, but the handle has that same knob as the old, the yeah, old yeah, cat. Yeah. So it has that like, so that's the Lev 3 from Victus. Oh, my second best bat? Second best bat. Never heard of it in your life. Never. Cool, cool, cool. Cheap too, so, I mean, compared to other bats. And this is the winner, dude. No, 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 this, this, this is the winner. I, I'm, I'm absolutely blown. I could have you guess 500 times and you wouldn't know what bat that was. Yeah. The only like mm -hmm. trick to tell is how flat the end cap is. Yeah. And. Looks like, like, the, a, like a solo. Uh, no, it's not a solo. But if I showed you like this bat here, what bat is this, you know? Can you tell what bat that is? Look at the handle. The bone saver. That's the bone saver. Good. And look at the end of this bat right there. Yeah. See how flat that is? It's like the same end It's cap. the same. It's like the same end cap. They, they, in fact, do have the same end cap. Yeah. So, uh, and it's not a hybrid. There's no connection piece. Yeah. This is a single piece. This is a single piece bat from Warstick called the Warhawk. That's, that, my, that's my best bat. That's your best bat. Wow. Have you ever you never you ever seen that bat? No. It's pretty. I almost feel like you should unwrap it. Dude, you did it. That's the bat. That's the bat. That's the guy you did the best with. Single piece alloy, middleweight. Pretty. Yeah. Well, now you know. Yep. Now you know. All right, uh, next hitter. A little bit bigger than the lefty that you saw in the video a lot. Uh, high school player, going to be a senior. Hit the ball well, good swing. Here are the top three bats again. It's all so, so close. But here's a random one. The blue and white bat. Remember this one from earlier? Uh, does, in fact, have that soft knob, so you know it's an Easton bat. But this bat we haven't talked about almost at all. This is the Mav 1, baby. Single piece alloy bat. Uh, somewhat of a flatter end cap, but you can sort of tell Easton. You start to learn. Easton has this, like, rounded end cap. Like, oh, okay, that's, that's Easton. But the Mav 1, holy cow, single piece alloy. There you go. That's his third hottest again hottest in quotes bat number two a bat that will get so much play and so many sales and everybody loves this bat in real life but is it that hot well for this hitter i guess it was number two it's got that sort of knob it's got this sort of end cap and then it's got that sort of connection piece you know it folks as the 2024 the goods uh, surprised actually to be honest with you that i didn't hit this bat the hardest i love this bat so much take it out of the wrapper and i think psychologically i'll figure out a way to make it hit harder but i didn't have another wrapper i couldn't tell now again i could have looked really close and been like oh i think this guy is the goods but i don't look close i just grab it i swing lime green all day has been the goods the number one bat Surprising, also didn't see this everywhere. Uh, got that same kind of end cap, got that same kind of this thing going on, but actually no connection piece. So that would make this the 2024 Voodoo One. That's so irritating because people want to hate this bat this year because they had to raise the price. Because remember, knobs cost more and warranties cost more. No, it doesn't. Let me leave you with three bats we think you should consider for 2024, realizing that our list changed all the time. If you want to see our most up-to-date list, go to our website, bestbbcorebats, type it in, go to batdigest.com, and you will find our list. We update it every month. If we were to tell you three bats that you should consider, if you have no idea what BB Core bat you should be looking at, the first one is based off of if you think being hot is the right one you think you're trying to find the bat that's hot realizing again with our caveat there's not a lot of difference between bat number one and bat number 15 okay out of 20 bats they're all right there and it just depends upon the hitter but if we were going to look at a bat that was hot if i were to take the average of all of our exit speeds per player and then rank those out per player and we have this kind of system to do that the number one bat that we would say right now is this bad boy which is the blue and yellow bat which is 
the Voodoo One. And we, we hate that idea because it's a single piece bat that's $420 with a fortified end cap, that, you know, with a fortified knob that should have worked in the first place, but it does have an extended warranty. Uh, we know this bat is sort of out of favor because it kind of had its run and people don't want to keep saying it's the best one ever. But if I were to tell you that there's a bat that had a quote unquote advantage for being a little bit hot it might be a hot certain i hate to use that word let's just call it warm i mean you might on a perfect hit uh with a smaller player i think you have a chance of getting maybe a mile an hour or so more out of a bat like this i think it's probably more like one percent better and so that is to say if your exit speed is 75 miles an hour which is probably about where a lot of hits happen at the bb core level in high school or jv or sophomore ball then you're probably going to get instead of 75 it'll be 70 uh, six seventy five point seven five. So we'll round up to seventy six, I guess. So just just a little bit more. You're talking three and a half more feet. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a lot, but if in your mind you want a quote unquote hot bat, I would say right now it's probably the Voodoo One 2024. Realizing people are going to hate that, and there's for sure other answers out there, but that's probably where we're at. If we then take this same data and we say, give me the hottest hits. I don't care about averages. I want like the number uno bomb, bomb stopper that some dude dropped. Give it to me. I want the fastest hit. And we take that amongst all the players. And then we kind of take some averages about you know, what, the, what the rank is. And then we add those ranks together. And then we sort by the lowest, by, by the best rank of all those bats. Here's the bat I would, I would consider for reals if that's what you want. You want like one bat you know if you can dial it in. It's gonna rock. It's this bat right here. This is the black on black of bat. This, my friends, is the 2024 Alloy Pro from Pro 44. I think, what do they call it? The Alloy XL or something like that? I don't know the name of it. I gotta rip, I, cause I can't tell cause the, the tape's on there. This bat had, this bat is ranked number one for us. That is to say the fastest hits that we had, if you combine it all together, this is the one that had the fastest hits. Now on average, it didn't, it didn't have the fastest hits. That was the Voodoo one. But the, the top hits came from this bat right here, which is a $250 fully customizable single piece alloy bat that you've got to go to like Pro 44 bats to buy. Unbelievable, I think. What a flipping value. Like this bat, I am so high on this bat right now, I cannot tell you. I think the love that this bat should be getting uh, should be through the roof. I'm not sure it will, and this is why, because it doesn't have great distribution. You can only buy a custom bat if you go to 44 Pro Bats. You can't get, so, so they're not gonna get Instagram posts and reposts from Dick's Sporting Goods and from Just Bats because you can only buy it there. So they're sort of on this island out there. They also don't have affiliate marketing. So that is to say, the dude on Facebook who's selling all of his affiliate marketing stuff, he's not, he's not gonna link this bat because they don't sell it at, at Headbanger Sports. And that's not, that's not a knock on them. It's just about distribution models. Like that is it. Like distribution models are different. You're not gonna hear about the Pro 44 Alloy XL, whatever it is very much. But I'm telling you right now, in terms of pure hot bat, Pro 44 Alloy XL. Dude, it's right, it's right there, it's right there. You can dial in the right size, you can dial in the right length, you can dial in the right colors, whatever you want. 250 bucks, fully customizable BB core bat, like to your front door. It takes like five weeks, so you gotta get on it. But dude, total, total win under the radar bat. And 44 alloy, and 44, I'm telling you right now, don't, don't get a big head, okay? Don't, don't you dare go out and make a two-piece composite or a hybrid bat. Don't you do it. That's what these companies do. They have a little bit of success. They're like, oh, we gotta make three bats in our lineup. No, why don't we just do one bat amazingly? Screw it, screw, you can't make a better BB core bat. You can't make it hotter. You can't do it. Just stick with it, man. Stick with it. Stop trying, don't, don't jump into the two piece space too early. I'm telling you, don't do it. Stay right here, stay right here. Make it great, tell the world, have everybody make a custom bat and figure out a way. Figure out a way to make not a custom one. Look, custom's cool, it's fun, I love it, okay? Great idea. But why don't we make this bat 229, not custom, or make like make like like limited edition stuff, like Bone Saber's doing with their awesome, like with, with that Bone Saber, war, like War Stick's doing with that Bone Saber bat. Like make a cool one, make a cool custom one, limited edition, and sell those in a big chunk to Just Bats and say, look, this bat's 229, right? And if they want a custom one, they can come to our website for $259 or whatever the price is, right? And sell a big, big bunch to close out bats. 
right? And sell that chunk at 229 or 249 or 230. I don't, I don't care what it is. Or maybe even 259. It's the same price. Someone just doesn't have to wait five weeks for it. Do that, win that, win the 250 space, force someone like the Voodoo One, who's a great bat, to say, you know what? 420 is a stupid price. Exactly. 420 is a stupid price. It should be 320. It should be 299. This bat should be 259. And then you should probably still buy this bat. If we were to go overall, like just value bat, that is to say, I were to look at a bat that was hot, had a decent sized barrel, and yeah, sort of, uh, definitely swings in the right place, and is a great at, like purchase price. There's, there's really no, it, there's, this is like the easiest decision in the history of baseball per, bat purchases. In terms of average exit speeds, in terms of average, we take the average, this bat's a top 10. So that's every player, every average, top 10 bat out of 20. So top 50%. In terms of hottest exit speeds, uh, this bat is number six, okay? In terms of price, it is number one and it is not even close, all right? In terms of swing weight, it's right where most players want it to be. In terms of barrel size, it does have kind of a small barrel, okay? This thing's gonna slide off of there. But that's okay, because you literally can buy three of these bats for what you can buy for a Voodoo One. And this bat is the Marucci F5, the single most underrated BB core bat in the history of all BB core bats. I don't understand why this bat is ever in stock. I don't get it. People losing their minds to go buy a bat like the Voodoo One, selling their kidneys, selling their kids like college tuition to buy this bat because they think, sorry, to buy a Voodoo One. And you can get this bat. You've always been able to get the F5, the 2021 version, the 20, whatever it was, 20, 2019, whatever. They haven't changed. They've changed virtually nothing on this bat, but that doesn't matter because since 2017, like we've been saying all along, they've met the BB core test. And this bat does it. And I think it's $130 brand new with warranty straight from every vendor you can find. You will find a Marucci F5 there. And holy crap, in terms of value buy, we recommend this bat across the board. You name it, you name the day, you name the kid, you name, you name the tournament, you want a BB core bat, you've got to consider the Marucci F5. It has to be on your list of being like, why don't I just spend 130 bucks on a good bat that's gonna get me through the season, and if I square one up, it's gonna hit the ball just as hard as everything else, and I have an extra 250 bucks to go to buy a glove or just to put in my bank account and to like buy groceries with. How about that? There's an idea. There's a crazy idea, right? In any case, if you're looking for a value bat for 2024, again, check our website because we update it every month. But as of right now, this is an easy choice, bro. 2024 Marucci F5, easiest choice uh, I think we've had all, all season. If you want a hybrid bat, if you want a two-piece, you're never gonna go wrong with the goods. Uh, we love that bat, always have loved that bat. Didn't, uh, it, it won a couple of categories for us, but we really think you should also check out a bat like the hybrid, uh, this guy here, the tan bat. What was the tan bat? Well, the tan bat was the 2024 Warstick Hybrid, is that what they're calling that thing? Uh, look, look how hard this, see this one of those bats where, can you believe that's a two-piece bat? In fact, it is a two-piece bat. What's this thing beeping like me? Um, this is a two-piece bat, you can't even tell, but it has that really flat end cap, uh, like, the, like the bone sabers tend to do. But um, you can almost see the connection piece. Maybe you can't actually, that's why it's so hard to tell. You can't tell that's a, that's a single piece bat, but that, that's, that's your bone saber hybrid. If you're looking for a two-piece hybrid bat, big fans, uh, we think this bat got a, little bit of, got a little bit of power in it. And if that's what you're looking for, that would be sort of our hybrid pick right now. If you want a composite barrel because you want something that's massive and kind of a lighter swing, which we totally get, smaller, younger kids, if, you, if, if, if money really isn't an object and you're okay spending, you know, 500 bucks, because that's what you, every time you buy a composite BB core bat, you're gonna have to do that. For 2024, I really think there's, I really think there's two really good options. And one is a little bit surprising, that's the rope. We've actually really liked the rope. We think it, I think it feels well. We like this sort of knob here. The exit speeds over here, I was just looking at are fantastic. It's actually tied in both, in both categories. You have the rope, and then you have this bat, which we've loved forever. It uh, doesn't get a ton of play, probably because it's $520 now, but the Cadex Composite, uh, which is the Cadex Vanta Composite, you can see that connection piece there. This bat, man, it just feels fantastic. Every time we hit this bat, everybody says, oh, that feels fantastic, especially with the black paint on it, because nobody's like thinking, hoping it's alloy or something. I don't know what's going on. But the Cadex Vanta composite, as well as the rope, those are two bats. If you want a composite barrel, so you want the kind of a bigger barrel, then that's where we would look if you want a composite bat for 2024 BB Core. 
2024 BB Corbat video. Wow, that was a lot. That was a lot of information. Hopefully you found something useful. Hopefully we found some differences or, or some distinctions that made some differences in your bat buying. If not, then you probably feel like me where it's like, man, these all, all these things kind of feel the same. I think the industry does a really good job of trying to make us think the differences are stark when in fact the differences even between expensive and, and, and cheap bats are really not. They're really not that much different. The swing weights are kind of the same. The exit speeds are kind of the same. The feels are kind of the same. The ratings are kind of the same. But does that justify a price difference or a reason for you to go try to find a special bat? Maybe, but that's not our decision. That's your decision. You're the expert for your hitter and what it is you actually need and want. We're just hopeful you found something in these differences that we measured that would be useful for 2024 in your bat purchasing. So with that said, again, go check the website, batdigest.com. Subscribe to the email. Subscribe to this. I don't know. Do the things where you click on the thing and then more things come to you from us. That's, that's the thing I want you to do. So in any case, hopefully you found something useful admin at batdigest.com if you got any questions for us we always love to hear from from people out there doing real things so so there you go thanks for watching folks uh we'll see you next time